In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Lumetri color inside of Adobe Premiere Pro to color grade specific colors within your frame. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and you've got some footage on your timeline, as you can see, I've got this shot here. The camera is booming up and we can see we've got a nice fairly blue sky and then we've got this green grass in the foreground. So if I only wanted to target this green or if I only wanted to target the blue, then fortunately there is a tool inside of Lumetri that allows us to do that. So we'll go into effects, search for Lumetri and that is Lumetri color that is in the color correction folder. We'll drop that onto our footage and over on the left side of Premiere Pro, we're going to go down into Lumetri Color and go down to HSL Secondary. And then as you can see, this is going to load up this tab here. So first of all, we want to begin by picking a color. So let's start with the green. So we'll select the green and then we'll move this top slider over to the left and the right and make sure that we can see the green starting to poke through. So everything that is not going to be affected will turn white slash gray and then everything that will be affected will be on screen. So we can see we've got this green clearly showing and everything else is not. Now that is for the hue, so that's the color. We can also target the saturation. So obviously the higher I increase the saturation, the more this disappears because this is log footage, it's raw footage, so there's not much saturation in there. And then we've got the luminance slider, so we can pull this to the left or the right to match that better. But once you've selected your color, so once you've selected the specific color that you want to affect, you can move down to correction and you have got this color slider here to add a color tint. So if I push this towards the red, you can see I'm adding red into this. It does look horrendous if you do that that much though. Generally, I just like to use this to add a little bit of enhancement to the colors. So at the moment, the greens aren't exactly green. They're kind of a dull green. So if I push them more towards the greens and it's going to help to add a bit of saturation to them and therefore making them pop a little bit more. Then of course we've got temperature. So this is our white balance. So if we increase this, it's going to make this warmer. And if we decrease this, it's going to make this colder. So this is a nice summer's day. So we want to make this fairly warm. Then we've got the tint. And if we push this to the left, it's adding green. If we push this to the right, it's adding more purple into the shot. So have a go with this. Make sure you find the color that you want. We've got contrast, so you can add contrast or take the contrast away. Again, completely up to you. We've got sharpening. Go easy on the sharpening because you can really notice when you start to add the sharpening in here. I normally like to leave this at zero. And then you've got saturation, so you can completely remove the saturation and make it black and white, or you can really increase that to make it pop. Now, let's target the blue. Let's change the blue to a more surreal color. So let's push the blues more towards a purple. So let's go back into Lumetri. We'll drop Lumetri color onto the clip. So this is our second Lumetri. The first was the green. The second one is going to be blue. So we'll go back into HSL secondary and we'll select the blue. Now you want to do the same thing. You want to try and select it. So only the blue appears and everything else disappears. So we're around there somewhere. That's about right. Again, play with the saturation slider if you need to, and then the luminance slider as well. But once you've got your selection, you can just go down and you can push this more towards the pinks. So that's going to add a little bit of pink into that. And then of course we can increase or decrease the temperature. So I'm going to increase the temperature to make this more pinky. We'll push the tint more towards purples, add a little bit of contrast leave the sharpening alone, and then you can add some saturation to make this really pop, or you can pull this down. But I'm just going to add a little bit of saturation. Now that looks great, but the problem is at the moment, because the water is reflecting the color of the sky, the water has also changed. And because of the way the light refracts and bounces off of the water, you can see we've got this part of the water down here, which hasn't been affected. And that's because this is more white and overexposed rather than being pure blue. So in order to avoid that, I'm just going to create a mask around the sky and the sky only so the water is not affected. So we'll just go up to the top of the metric color and as you can see, you've got a ellipse mask, a rectangle mask and a free draw bezier or a pen tool. So I'm just going to select that last option and I'm just going to draw a mask around the top half of my frame. So around there. If we zoom back in, you can see we've got this really harsh line down the middle of our video and that's because there is no feathering. So if we go into mask one, go down to mask path and then mask feather, 
If you increase the mask feather all the way up to around 500, 600, then it's going to slowly blend that into the video. So if we come out of that effect, you can see we've got this really nice subtle pink effect in the sky. And then we've got the greens down here, which are now popping. Of course, if you wanted to turn a layer off, you can just select the effects button and that's going to turn that off. But that is how you target individual colors inside of Adobe Premiere Pro using Lumetri. Of course, if your camera is moving and you've created this mask around your colors, then you just want to go ahead and create a brand new keyframe on your mask path and then move forward or move backwards in time and just move that mask to follow the camera movements. It's really important that you do this because if you don't create this animation on the mask, then when your camera moves, that mask is going to stay where it is and a part of your frame is going to turn purple or turn whatever color that you've selected and you don't want this. So just update that mask to follow the camera movements and that should do exactly what you need it to do. But there you go. That is how I target specific colors inside of Adobe Premiere Pro to help enhance or change the colors of the scene. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate your support and I will see you in the next video. See you then.